In the Gospel of Mark, when you get in a boat and cross over, it's meant to signal that you are crossing a boundary, a border. That something on the other side is different from what you've been encountering on this side. So we have Jesus today. Lying in a boat, exhausted, worn out, falling asleep. How did he get to that moment of being asleep in the boat, so tired that everybody else can see that this might not be a good idea to cross the lake at the moment? But he is so tired that he just falls asleep. How did he get there? If you remember the story of the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, it is a live action movie where one thing after another happens, and Mark even says immediately, over and over and over again, immediately, he's in the synagogue, a demon says, Holy One of God, how can I help you? Immediately, he's at Peter, Peter's house, and his mother-in-law is sick, and Jesus heals her. He then goes out and prays on the mountain. And then, immediately, Peter and all the disciples found him with their anxiety and invite him to continue and heal the people in their town. And Jesus gets up and walks to the next village and a crowd gathers around him and he heals and casts out demons. He's in a house teaching when a roof is torn open and people drop in to have their friend healed. Immediately, story after story after story of Jesus and crowds of people seeking teaching and healing, seeking comfort and support, seeking to be brought back into community immediately. And this last day, before he gets in the boat exhausted and passes out, he's been sitting with the crowd teaching. Now in Matthew and Luke, that teaching would have been the sermon, right? The sermon that we have talked about over and over again, where Jesus explains how we are to be as a community. In Mark, it's a story of parables. It's a story told about seeds being sown, about extravagant growth. It's about a sower who cares more about sharing the love of God than where that seed lands. And after that sharing with the crowds around him, he gets in the boat. He says we need to cross over. And he's so tired, he falls asleep. He falls asleep in that boat on the edge of a boundary crossing. He's asked them to take him to the other side. Well, what is on the other side? Oh, and by the way, that is the Sea of Galilee. What's on the other side of the Sea of Galilee from where they are? On the other side is Gennesaret. That is the side, the section, that houses the Roman Empire. Now how do we know that? Because in the next story, when he gets to the other side, he encounters a demon in a man called Legion. So, people take the Bible literally. But in this case, it is meant to be figuratively. That Jesus is attacking the evil of his day, is challenging the evil of his day, the legion that is the Roman Empire. Okay? So as he is on this boat, a boat where he is exhausted and falls asleep, it's just a prelude to getting across the sea to confront the legion. A boundary crossing. And while they are in the boat, a storm comes up. And in the Sea of Galilee, these storms arise quickly like that and can be very choppy. And in that boat, 
the disciples become fearful. They become fearful that they are going to take on so much water that they will sink into the lake. Sink to the bottom. And so they wake Jesus up. They've been with him, right? They know what has happened. They've been there for that entire story. They know everything that he has done in this very short, quick span of time. They know what he has done. And yet they turn to him and say, Aren't you afraid we're perishing? Don't you want to save us from this storm? Don't you want to at least be awake while the storm is raging around us? And so he wakes up and he says, peace be still. Now that's the nice King James version of how we say the words, peace be still. There's a sense in the, the original that it's more like a mother hushing a baby. Hush, be quiet. Could be another translation of those words. Peace, be still. That he's saying to the fearful disciples, the ones who are worried about perishing, hush, be quiet. Peace, be still. He's saying to them, Come, let go of that inner fear. And he literally says to them after he hushes everything and it quiets, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? Have you no faith? Why are you so afraid? I've been struggling with these words this week because normally the why are you so afraid words I hear and know that that means it's a boundary that I need to cross, a border that I need to cross over, a people that I need to welcome. But hearing those words these last couple of years, why are you afraid? I have lots of answers to that, right? Why am I afraid? Because we have a Delta variant raging through the United States. If you look at the map of Illinois right now, how high is the transmission? It is red. We're a five alarm fire right now. And we aren't even as bad as the redder red places. And yet every time I'm on Facebook, I see pictures from the newspaper, from other people's posts, that they've been out in the world without their masks. Why are you afraid? Because there's a very real danger right now. And maybe, maybe some of us aren't afraid enough. Because we want to go back to what was, but we aren't willing to talk to all of our friends and neighbors and community members and say to them, I want to do all the things that I see you doing. But I can't until you get your shot. I can't until you take it as seriously as it's required to be taken. Why are you afraid? And if that isn't enough to be fearful of, how many of you are afraid of the climate right now? Of what is happening around the world? And we don't even show the pictures every day. The West Coast is burning. And when was the last time you saw an image? 
When was the last time you saw an image of Siberia burning? Why are you afraid? A hurricane came through and flooded not just Louisiana and Mississippi, but moved all the way up the eastern coast, causing great damage and flooding. Why are you afraid? This week, particularly around this holiday, if you are a Muslim American, you're afraid. You're afraid because people blame you for something that happened that you had no part of, that isn't part of your faith and your tradition, but grew out of a branch of your faith and is causing such fear. And because people are afraid, they act out and they hurt others. And so this week we'll find out how high the incidence of hate against Muslim Americans have become. Next week you will begin to hear the stories of the mosques that were tagged, of the incidents of people being threatened and beaten. You will begin to hear of the acts of hate. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid when this week Unemployment benefits, pandemic benefits, ended. Why are you afraid? You don't know where the next job is coming from. Because the job that you could maybe take pay you barely enough to feed yourself, let alone provide housing and a car to get to work, and a phone that is needed, and maybe an internet access that is required. Why are you afraid? Into that moment, into that fear, Jesus steps and says, peace be still. Now if you read the translation in your Bible, it says, the disciples were full of awe. Well, it turns out they made it nice, the translators. Because that word that is used for awe here is actually a word that describes fear, overwhelming fear, a fear that is all-encompassing. That they are full of fear still, even after, even after Jesus asked them, And yet those words, those words are always a comfort. A breath prayer that allows us to calm and be still. So when you are afraid, when you are afraid, say those words. Say those words until you can feel your heart rate going lower until you can feel your fear ebbing away. Say those words, peace, be still, hush, be quiet, until the fear does not overwhelm you so that you still are willing to get in the boat and cross over. 